back in the old days, a lot of times, the main event of a, of a live event, a house show, if you want to call it that, wouldn't actually go on last. And you have different reasons for that. One might be is you're not going to have your local top guy go over in the match because maybe like Ric Flair's coming in as the traveling NWA world champion and you're sitting there and setting up for something else, a return match down the road. Uh, but you're going to have Hooker Crook, the heel goes over, or the face doesn't go over clean, and he doesn't get the big moment. So you don't want to send the fans home pissed. You'll set up something else where a babyface tag team, maybe, or another popular mid-card babyface guy goes over in the main event to kind of send the people home happy. That would be one philosophy. Another philosophy might be that, A, you're setting up to something else bigger throughout the course of the night, so you'd throw out, in theory, the main event earlier on to set up for something else that actually did close the show. Another thing could be, especially in the days with guys like uh, Flair and Hogan, and just all throughout the territory days. You know, a lot of times you'd run maybe two shows on Saturday and or Sunday, so you could be sitting there and having to work, like if you're Hogan, working Chicago in the afternoon and Milwaukee in the evening. So it makes sense to have your match in Chicago right before the intermission because you're giving yourself maximum travel time to go to Milwaukee. Or same thing with the Ric Flair if he had to work twice on Saturday and he went to uh, Charlotte and then later on went to Greensboro. You know, it makes sense to give those guys as much travel time as humanly possible. It most certainly does. Also makes some sense if you're trying to sit there and utilize this main event match to get exposure on other people and see how they can deliver in a main event type of spot closing out a show. So there used to be reasons for it. We know now, though, that the reality for the WWE for many years has been at least two decades is that in the way it's packaged, presented, and sold to us is that the main event of a WWE pay-per-view is always the match that goes on last. It might not be the biggest draw. It might not be the most interesting or compelling match or the best match. It might not have the biggest and best stars, best stories, best characters, but it is still the main event. No matter how anybody tries to spin it, this is crap about, well, we ended up being the main event because, you know, we had the best match or blah, 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 bullshit. The main event and the people that typically get paid the most on the pay-per-view, unless you're part of the breakfast club or something or your undertaker, it's the match that goes on last that gets the most money. That's the main event. That's just the reality of WWE. Now, it's interesting. We're getting ready to head into Hell in a Cell on Sunday. And, you know, I saw a tweet that Vince put out there and then he quickly deleted talking about a triple main event. Apparently, we're going to have three Hell in a Cell matches on the card. We're getting pretty close to... Uh, TNA lockdown territory by having every match in a goddamn cage or hell in a cell at this point. But you're talking about the U.S. title match between Rusev and Roman Reigns being in hell in a cell, the raw, the universal title match, excuse me, between Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens being inside a hell in a cell, and then the women's title match for Raw of Charlotte and Sasha Banks being inside of a hell in a cell. So the hashtag is going to be triple main event, which we know is a bunch of bullshit. You've got three Hell in a Cell matches, maybe, but you've only got one main event, and that is the match that goes on last. And you're hearing a lot of discussion talking about how Charlotte and Sasha Banks could end up being the actual main event of this show and end up closing out the night. And you know what? I get it. I understand it in a lot of ways. Because let's look at it here for a second. When you talk about the story and the characters... The ones that have had the longest association together in terms of WWE television have been Charlotte and Sasha Banks. You also look at the emphasis of the WWE's trying to put into their female performers and trying to emphasize women's wrestling and talk about all this Divas Revolution crap. You know, they, there's at least some type of conscientious understanding that the way they've done it in the past, treating the women bad and treating them like a joke, wasn't the way to go and it wasn't good for business. So... This could potentially be a way to validate those women, motivate those women, and sit there and say, hey, you know, in this company, we provide you the opportunity, and if you perform and you excel and you exceed expectations and you prove that you earn it, you'll get it. Nothing is going to hold you back. You know, and you also look at this, too, from a standpoint of, you know, maybe it's an indication that the men are good enough. And maybe, and maybe you won't like me saying this, but it's a fact. You know, one way to send a message to the male locker room is to put the women in the main event of the pay-per-view. Because there's always going to be that man is superior to woman crap and all this other hot garbage. But at the end of the day, there's no better way to send a message to that male locker room and say, you guys weren't good enough. Look at this. The women are main eventing the show. 
And when you look at it, frankly, I look at the rest of this card, and I sit there and say to myself, you've got what? Rusev versus Roman Reigns for the U.S. title inside of Hell in a Cell. That doesn't need a main event. Uh, you've got Cesaro and Sheamus versus the New Day for the tag titles. That doesn't need a main event. The Cruiserweight title match between Kendricks and Perkins. Kendrick and Perkins most certainly doesn't need to main event. should just be opening the show. Enzo Amore and Big Cass versus uh, the Ball Jobber Club. That sure as hell has got billing for first or second on the card. You've got the WWE Universal title match inside the Hell in a Cell with Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. You might sit there and say, well, the WWE Universal title is the most important belt. It's the biggest belt. Uh, that's the one that should always main event. Eh, you'd like it to be that way ideally, but that doesn't always have to be the case. And frankly, is the story so interesting between Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens that it automatically necess necessitates or demands or commands a main event spot on the show? And the answer to me simply is not. The only way it could even get to that point is if you involve Triple H at this moment, and I don't even know necessarily if that automatically guarantees that it needs to be main event, although I'm most certain God ugh, would it disagree, ugh. and that could ultimately be why this match would potentially main event with Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens, is that Triple H is going to be involved, and they want God to get the glory at the end of the day. Praise God. When you look at it, though, that card doesn't scream out with a bunch of obvious main events. It's a filler, non-Big Four pay-per-view. You know, Charlotte and Sasha have the longest-running story and and the most, most layers to their story and to their characters and their involvement. So if you were ever going to do it, this is a good time to try it, a good time to do it and see what the fuck happens. Because they're probably not going to go out there and bomb. I don't know if they're going to tear the house down, but they're not going to bomb. You know, so why not? Why not do it? And you know, if guys like Seth Rollins or Kevin Owens are pissed about it, you know what, then maybe they should be better at their fucking job and leave no other alternative or no other choice but for the WWE to put them in the main event. Again, when I come back to sending a message, if anything, that's the real positive that could come out of this. Is for a lot of guys, and a lot of you guys watching know what I'm talking about, whether you'll want to admit it or not, is we sit there and we have this superiority complex, and this is pounded into us by society, what better way to send a message to those men in the locker room and say, hey, you're not cutting the snuff. The woman's taking your spot. You know, when we're about two weeks away potentially from uh, a, a villain, <laughs> let me rephrase that, from potentially having our first female president, you know, it's a way for the WWE to kind of show that they have some progressiveness in terms of getting out of the mindset of the past where the women are the jokes and the sex acts only, that they can be taken seriously, that this is a company that values its female workers, its female employees, and putting them in the main event here. I mean, what the fuck, why not? Now, granted, I'm not gung-ho about it, because to me, just because the story's had a long arc doesn't make it a good one, and it most certainly hasn't been with Charlotte and Sasha Banks. You know, Charlotte wins the pay-per-view matches, Sasha, Sasha wins the TV matches. We've already had multiple title changes here. You know, if we if we didn't have multiple times where these girls have already wrestled, going all the way back, frankly, to WrestleMania 32, and we didn't have multiple title changes already, I'd be a lot more gung-ho about this. This is something where the opportunity makes sense and the moment makes sense, and the match can make sense, and the time makes sense, but the story really doesn't. And the story just isn't good enough. And this is yet another example where the WWE creative team lets down the performers. Because two women main eventing a WWE pay-per-view, while it will be somewhat of a big deal, should be a much bigger deal than it actually is going to be. Now this is a good way for the WWE to try and appeal even more to the hardcore audience, which seems to be the direction they're going. I understand it. I don't agree with it. You know, and it's just, it's one of these things where, you know, sometimes when it comes to the women wrestlers in WWE, it's kind of one of those, I believe it when I see it type of deals. Because a lot of the hardcore fans that talk about how much they love the women wrestlers and everything else are the same ones years ago that used to talk about how the women's match at WrestleMania or other pay-per-views was the piss and or shit smoke break. Now, all of a sudden, they love women's wrestling? I mean, come on now. Um, but if the story was better, and frankly, if the performers are better, you know, I think Sasha's pretty good. I really don't think that highly of Charlotte, and I don't know why 
a lot of people do. A lot of our pay-per-view matches are sloppy bitch fests, if we're being honest. I mean, they're not good. They're very sloppy and clunky. There's not much of a story that's told. It's just a bunch of moves thrown together with no cohesion, no real chemistry, and nothing ultimately really gets accomplished. And to sit there and do this main event, if they just have Charlotte go over again, it's going to feel like it's just one epic waste of fucking time. Why do all of this shit just to come back to the same point you were at WrestleMania where Charlotte was walking out the damn champion? You know, so I think about that shit, and I'm like, if that's the direction you're going to go down, then don't fucking do it. Sorry. I mean, I'd like to be really gung-ho about it. I'm just not for a variety of reasons. But if the WWE wants to throw the women out there and put them in the main event, I don't see any other match that really deserves the main event any more than this one does. So why the fuck not? Sometimes the only way you find out whether performers have got it and whether or not they can deliver the goods and whether they're clutch big-time performers is to give them the opportunity and put them in that spot. Why not sit there and throw out a Charlotte and Sasha Banks here? Maybe... Charlotte rises to the occasion and is phenomenal. Maybe Sasha isn't any good. Or maybe Sasha steals the show and Charlotte is her typical bumbly, botchy self. Or maybe both of them rise to the occasion or neither one of them rise to the occasion. But it's that way it's a good indication of knowing, hey, we've got something here. Some, some of these women can really, really go and they are as effective and productive for us as the men are. And as a result... We can think about main eventing them on other pay-per-views in the future someday, even big ones like, let's say, SummerSlam or, God forbid, WrestleMania. So from a big-picture standpoint, I'm okay with this. I mean, I would be happy as hell to see Sasha get this spot, this moment, this opportunity. Charlotte, eh, not so much. Um, I just, like I said, wish the story was better and wish I didn't go into this thinking that it's just going to be one gigantic waste of time. You know, I don't want to hear them sit there and talk about triple main event because that's a bunch of bullshit. Just because there's three Hell in a Cell matches does not make it a triple main event. And I hope that's not this company's way of trying to minimize some things and uh, change some of the perspectives about it. If they do have the women go on last by saying, well, we had two other main events too. Let's talk about those like they're just as good. No, the match that goes on last of WWE pay-per-views is always the main event, even if it's not the most interesting or biggest drawing match with the most interesting, compelling story and or characters. The main event goes on last to WWE pay-per-views. And I, for one, would be happy to see a company that for so many years has treated its women like second- and third-class citizens and treated them like shit and put them in so many bad situations where it would be impossible for anybody to fucking get over. Now we get to this point in time, and we've got freaking women main eventing a WWE pay-per-view. For that and that reason alone... And the fact that none of these other fucking guys, honestly, at this point, especially like the Rusevs and the Roman Reigns and the Rollins and the Owens, have done anything to me that, that automatically demands that they have to be in that main event spot. And like I said, if you want to send a message and you want to accomplish something short-term and long-term, big picture across the entire umbrella of the talent roster, main event those women. Because that sends one hell of a message. So I hope the WWE decides to do the right thing, and that is put Charlotte and Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's title on last at Hell in a Cell. I think they'd be foolish to not do so. The hardcore fans that they're appealing to so adamantly right now seem to be pointing in that direction. In this particular case, just give the dwindling audience what they want, because that's what you want to appeal to at this point in time. Why go against the grain? If the breeze is blowing in that direction... Embrace it. Go with it. You might be pleased with the results.